Today's gospel, Jesus happens upon animals for sacrifice being sold inside the temple. Uh, these animals were necessary for Jewish worship. They were offered as sacrifice for our sins. Um, but Jesus wants this temple area to be a place for prayer. He wants it to be sacred. The Latin word that we get sacred from, sacer, literally means set apart. Set apart. So he wants this space to be sacred for communion with God, for silence with God. We read in the gospel, we heard in the gospel, his disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. And, this is the, and to this the Jews answered and said to him, What can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews are, of course, confused because they're like, Herod has been working on this temple for 46 years, and this crazy man's going to destroy it? But Jesus is wanting to shift the focus from Herod's temple to the temple, the true temple, the true dwelling place of God on earth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, among them in the gospel, among you and me in this holy mass. You and I are not asked to buy animals inside the temple or outside the temple. We are asked each Sunday to unite something far greater, to unite our hearts to the perfect act of love, the crucifixion. That is the sacrifice of this Mass, the destruction and resurrection of the temple of God. And what an honor it is to be invited into that love, to be invited to partake in this Holy Mass with our whole hearts. As many of you know, I am a fighting Texas Aggie. You're welcome, and I'm sorry. And at Texas A&M, they have this cool tradition of the Aggie ring, right? All the Aggies know to look at everybody's finger, and you're like, Father Christopher, why don't you wear your Aggie ring? It's a combination of three reasons. One, in the Mass, I am in persona Christi. My hands are ordained to be Christ's hands in the sacraments, so I don't want you to see that Jesus Christ is an Aggie. He is. But... <laughs> uh, two, two, it might not fit anymore. Okay, that might be. And third, bishops wear rings, and I don't want anybody to think I'm a bishop. Okay. So when I was at Texas A&M, we all got these awesome Aggie rings. And this is your connection to everywhere. Aggies totally rip everybody else off to support other Aggies. I know, I'm sorry. We love, we love each other. It's a great community. Not as good as the Catholic Church. <laughs> and a really cool thing happened towards the end of my time at A&M. When you get 90 credit hours, you're, you are allowed to apply for an Aggie ring. And this Catholic household had a member in it that could not afford his Aggie ring. His family told him we cannot afford it, and he humbly said, okay, I will not get an Aggie ring, and that's fine with me. And they said, that is not fine with us. So they pulled as much money as they could to buy one of these rings. I looked them up. They're $1,500 right now. And they pulled their money together, and they said, we don't have enough. And they said, so let us go out into the broader community at Texas A&M St. Mary's Catholic Center. Let us ask these people who love this man, these people who have been served by this man, these people who have been to Holy Mass with this man, and let us tell them our predicament. And they did. And all of us poor college students could only respond one way, absolutely. So they secretly got the size of his ring. It was a little off for the record, but they secretly got the size of his ring, and they raised all of the money in one day, because people love this man, in one day. And you might ask, 
How did they keep it a surprise? Well, they told the Association of Former Students, we want to surprise our friend, and they said, sounds awesome. So they bought this ring without him knowing. And you might say, how did they get him to the Association of Former Students on ring day without him knowing? Because this man was amazing, and he was there to support his brothers who were receiving their rings. He was already there. So let me tell you, it was absolutely amazing to show up on ring day and pretend that we were supporting our friends, which we were, but everybody was really excited about this friend, to not mention that his family was hiding around the corner. And that moment when we were all standing and somebody went and got their ring, and then they said, okay, it's your turn. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, your ring, go get your ring. And to be a part of that moment, I was so thankful that those roommates had said, we want to extend beyond this tiny community we want to extend into this whole community. I remember sitting there. I can't even remember how much I gave. I wish I gave more. And I remember being so thankful to be united to that act of love, that act of generosity, that moment of joy. Brothers and sisters, as you know, we are in the middle of a capital campaign. Today is Commitment Sunday. We are building a church to celebrate the Eucharist, the house of the very word incarnate, to dispense our Lord's grace in the sacraments. And I want all of us to be a part of it. Plenty of people saw the joy from afar on Aggie Ring Day. People saw all of us crying and smiling and hugging each other, and they said, that's pretty grand. But I promise you, none of us had more gratitude than the ones who got to be such an intimate part of it, who got to be a part of the sacrifice, who got to be a part of the love. Brothers and sisters, the first Sunday in this beautiful church is going to be incredible. And I promise you that not a soul will be standing in that church thinking, man, I really regret giving money to this. I think we will all be saying, God, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Now, we aren't going to be able to surprise Jesus with a brand new church. He's seen the blueprints. We're not going to be able to surprise Father Dat with a brand new church. They both know it's coming, but I hope that we can surprise both of these incredible men by our generosity. We are at a crucial stage in this campaign. We are trying to raise 18 million to break ground, 23 million to bless this church. We are at 12 million right now. And you say, wow, we have a long way to go. We have to bring in this whole community. That 12 million consists of 442 families. That is 7% of our church. Today, we can change that. Every family has an opportunity to unite to the sacrifice, to unite to this love. Some of you might have seen the email we sent out that I told Father Dat I wanted to do something. I am giving to this campaign. I said, Father Dat, can I have the opportunity to shave my beard for this campaign? And he said, sure. And I, I want you to know, I do not want to shave my beard. The only person who wants me to shave my beard is my dear Grandma Alice. Okay, She hates my beard. And at first we were talking about money, like what should the goal be? What should the goal be that we have you shave your beard? Correction, that we have Father Dat shave your beard. Live stream on Divine Mercy Sunday. What should the goal be? <laughs> they have good ideas, these people. And I said, let's make it about the people. Let's make it about the participation. So I have said, if 2,500 families participate by March 
31st, that's Easter Sunday. Keep in mind, we have 6,000 families. I want all of you in on this. I want everybody to cry with me at the first day of this church. But if we get 2,500 by Easter Sunday, you will also get a live video and a live event of Father Dat shaving my beard. <laughs> 